it, funnily enough, that venue, Marrickville Town Hall, on one night, Michael Green and I fought each other at that venue, and Aram also fought on that same night as well at that same venue on that show, which is pretty funny. And then like 12 years later, we're all there as friends. Those two are promoting and um, I've got a fighter on it. So that was pretty cool. It was Greeny versus Greeny and I fought each other and then uh, Aram fought a boy called um, Adam Taylor. Adam Taylor, fought a guy called Adam Taylor from Taipan. So yeah, that was, that was pretty cool to like be back there. That was sick. Um, yeah, good weekend, good weekend, good weekend. Uh, all right, 1774, we had four fights on the weekend. Uh, first of all, shout, massive shout out to my Canary brother, Aram and uh, Greeny. That was a sick show, man. It was so good. Um, yeah, just the whole day was awesome. The day of amateur, on the amateur day, we had three people fighting. We had Boomstick, he got the win. Lin Dan, um, unfortunately she lost, fought a really classy, um, technical, skillful girl uh, from NTG slash Sitzelton. And uh, third and final we had Jerome who got the win. Uh, so that was awesome, but the, so Davey fought Detrit, uh, who's ranked by the WBC, WBC, I think it's sixth or fifth in the world. Man, it was awesome. Like, Detrit, I knew taking the fight, like, Detrit is not a slouch. He has been absolutely tearing through a lot of foreigners in uh, in Thailand lately. Um, he knocked out Magnus Anderson, who's from Revolution, who's currently in Tulum. Uh, he knocked a, he stopped Jordan Fielding, a good friend of mine who owns Strong Heart in Adelaide. He, he was he was just tearing through foreigners. But even against Thais, like, he, man, he's incredible. And the speed and power at which he kicks is like terrifying man he is crafty skillful and strong so shout out to dynamus and daniel barber uh and his partner their gym is where detrit is working he took they took the fight uh it's been matched for a while it was matched before detrit came to australia but um yeah man it was awesome davy i, I the plan from the start was sort of to take away Detrit's space um, and put, put a bit of pressure on him forward, take away his space as the fight went on. So round one and two, just play the classic game of just timing and distance and figure it all out. But I said to Davey at the end of the second round and the start of the third that now was the time to start to take away his space because if he was going to play the one for one game, he, Detrit would have been happy to just outpoint him, <clears throat> but he needed to start to put the pressure on and close the gap, not give him that room to kick, look for the clinch and find the elbows. And you see in that fourth round, um, a perfect example of like distance management and um, hand control. Davey measured both of Detrit's hands. Detrit pressed forward because he understood and knew the distance from that, found that left elbow over the top, cut Detrit, massive cut. Blood sprayed onto Shawnee's camera, across past uh, Pinky and Sai. And then Davey just jumped on him, punch, 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 punch. I started yelling for the doctor. I'm like, stop, doctor, get the doctor, get it. Because I knew if the doctor was going to have a look at it. Um, Davey coming in for a punch actually got caught with a high left kick, which kind of wobbled him a little bit, but he jumped on him, kept it going. Doctor came in and, uh, yeah, it was like, Kill Bill style with the blood spurt. So, um, yeah, David got the TKO victory and we absolutely fucking lost it. It was just sick. Um, yeah, it was so awesome. So, really happy for Davey. He obviously had a real, recently had a, uh, a loss to Eddie Abasolo in um, San Diego, which was just a little too little too late on that fight once he finally started going and then a, a really good fight against Yusuf Bulganum. But, even though those losses were closed, they were still losses. So I was really happy for David to get that win back in. And um, yeah, I was so happy. And next year, like, he's gonna have an awesome year. There's already a potential really cool fight overseas uh, lined up for him at the beginning of the year. Possible domestic matchup, I think, which will be really good against um, Cody Jamison from uh, Machete. He, uh, Cody stopped Riley Anastas from Riddlers in the first round. Um, and 
yeah, Cody's like really starting to prove himself as like a proper, like one of the top dogs at 72 and a half now. So I think I think he and Davey would be a real sick fight. Um, yeah, plus a, a, another few on the horizon. So yeah, sick weekend. Shout out to my boys that put the shot. Shout out to them. Best sushi, man. Look at the size of these fucking rolls. Look at the size of that roll, man. Shit. I got Sean some too before he ran him some fuck. <laughs> yeah, I might, uh, I might Photoshop that. <laughs> yeah. What are you, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> Okay, so, one gloves, because people often ask about them, right? I, I don't think people fully appreciate how small they are. We've got like different versions of them here. It's from when they've been, like, as they've changed through, like when the logo changed. <clears throat> but, the one gloves, man, I don't think people fully appreciate. So the block through there, so these are a four ounce glove. So the block through there, like, it is nothing. So I would compare the thickness to, I mean, it's tiny. It's probably like a centimeter. Yeah, anyway, it's tiny. So when you go to wrap hands, right, people often ask, when you go to one, there's two ways that you can do it. You can either wrap the hands yourself, so you have a certain amount of gauze that you're allowed to take or, or gauze and tape, and they will check it and then you can wrap your athlete's hands or they have someone there that wraps hands as well. Because trying to have, trying to wrap <coughs> with the, trying to wrap with these, with a four ounce glove is a lot different to like wrapping like with a bigger glove, like with an eight or a 10, you use a lot less gauze and a lot less padding. Um, and then obviously subsequently a lot less tape. So um, yeah, they are, <laughs> people don't fully appreciate sometimes how small they are, they are tiny. Like fucking tiny. I was actually weighing it before this reason I had to scale out. But yeah, they are tiny. Wow. So yeah, anyway, they're little gloves for people that are asking. Oh, and then before, but the medals. What's that bad boy weigh? That's a, it's almost a kilo. That's a thick metal. Yeah. Wow. Compared to the glove. <laughs> 100 grams. Oh shit. Oh man. Just gonna finish this with a clip of you with hair. Hey, right up in there. Focus that close. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Twenty eighteen. This was twenty was this like twenty eighteen? Yeah, twenty eighteen. Fizu University Muay Thai World Championships. Diandra won a gold medal for um she stopped Thailand. Thailand first round to win a gold medal. Fizu, here we go. That's what they're from. Jesus, this is dirty, I've got to give this a clean. Twenty eighteen Fizu World University Muay Thai Championships. Gold, silver, bronze. These were like given to all the heads of country. Covered in fucking ash from the <laughs> incense. Oh, this week is Moisop elbows in celebration of Davy's big win against that rip with his big left elbow. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna work on leading our power punches off our lead hand, and then we'll work on drilling the elbow off that. So, bit of a lots of work rate. Uh, heavy with the hands, finishing with the elbow. Again, what did the work for me on the Saturday night? So, yeah, it kind of trickles down from. We've been doing a bit of that lately. Whatever our fighters have done well, kind of using that as our focus of motivation. So, kind of works nice. The guys seem to enjoy it too. So. Yeah, nice. It too is good.
All right, so it's uh, 6.15 Wednesday afternoon. We've got uh, two classes going on at the moment. We've got an intermediate class, which San is taking, and then Muay Thai for everyone as well. So uh, on a Wednesday, like we have most of the other days, we have class in the morning, class at lunchtime, 4.30 uh, Muay Thai for everyone and kids, 5.30 Muay Thai for everyone and intermediate, and we've got another class on at 6.30. Fighters start training at six, they've just started running. Uh, and then they'll do drills and pad work and a few other things. We've only got one person left to fight uh, for the year, unless there's any last minute ones come up, but Mr. Buggy, um, real slim shady, he's uh, fighting on Hardcore 10th of December. So in about a week and a half. Now both Kyle, for Kyle, this will be... Is this, is this your seventh fight? <laughs> This is Kyle's seventh fight, and it's his seventh fight this year. So he had his first fight this year in uh, February. Is the first one in February? First fight in February or March? First fight was in March, and uh, so this will be his seventh fight for the year. He and Jerome are very similar. So Jerome, Jerome and Kyle had their first fight on the same show. Fought on a lot of the shows since, same one since, but this will be his seventh, and Jerome had six for the year. And they just started fighting this year, so uh, yeah, unreal from those boys, because solid work ethic, and they put in the work, they've deserved it, they've just all year um, trained, and any fights I've had for them, they've taken them. So yeah, Kyle will be the last one for the year, hardcore December 10th, and then we'll be back for another massive year. You guys are just back from running. Uh, for 2023, you already have a lot, a lot of stuff planned. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a good year. And Kyle, last one, finishes off on the 10th. And then we're, uh, then it's chill out time. Then it's Christmas party, then it's chill out time. Yeah, Christmas party, then it's chill out time. <laughs>